All right, welcome listeners. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Unsecurity Podcast. This is episode 126, and the date is April 7th, 2021. Joining me is my good friend, great guy, and InfoSec expert. InfoSec is short for information security. Oh, just saying. Th- thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Yep. Wonder. Just uh, want to be clear. <laughs> Brad I. So welcome, Brad. Good morning. Good morning. We were just talking before the show how uh, sleep deprived we are lately. Yeah. Well, and we're recording today because I woke up yesterday with a like at four with a migraine that finally cleared up about three in the afternoon. I, I was able to at least function from about starting at nine but i was like i woke up and i was like you gotta be kidding me evan's gonna be like does he not want to do this anymore no <laughs> oh you know me man i cut I, people slack i know it's just been crazy though because I, I don't even and i actually don't even question that stuff you know because you know our number one core value is tell the truth so i give i give people the benefit of the doubt man and that's just how we are right so when i come to you and say like Hey, I got this thing, you know, you'll, you'll give me the same, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I just, that. it's been a, it, like we were talking about, it's been a, like, I thought 2021 was supposed to be better. It's been a <laughs> crappy, like right. late February through early April so far. I know, man, it's got to get better. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, and me being a faith guy and, you know, and I have, I don't, I don't push it on people and I don't, uh, you know, it, it, we've got our beliefs, right? Yeah, you got your own thing. But the, uh, I was telling a buddy of mine, you know, another Christian friend of mine that, uh, you know, when you talk about like spiritual stuff, right? You've got God and you've got Satan, right? You've got good yeah. and you've got bad. And so, you know, maybe, and so, it always seems like the people that are being the most effective or that are on the verge of some kind of breakthrough are the ones who are getting attacked the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always, one of my things I like to joke and, and say is like, you know, I know God wouldn't give me more than I can handle. I just wish you didn't trust me that much. Right. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah, we're, you know, getting through it. Well, and there's, there is, I mean, there's blessing, there's grace, there's good things on the other side of it, man. And we were talking about that too, right? When you're, yeah. you know, you just be persevere, right? A lot of these things are outside of your control, but yeah. you know, you lead by example. I love the way you lead your family. You know, as a friend, it's cool to see it. So. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so, I was, I shared with you yesterday, my oldest got uh, asked to be a, uh, or recommended by one of her teachers to be an editor for the school newspaper you yeah. know, freshman year. And it, it's a pretty big thing. I was like, awesome. I'm so glad you got your mom's school, <laughs> yeah, like study ethic then rather than mine. Mine was in high school, wait till the last minute and do as little as possible to get by. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mine was sports school yeah. or sports girls. Yeah. Drinking. So oh, I didn't I didn't drink in high school, but it, it was yeah, I was not a I wasn't a bad like disruptive student, but I would not consider myself as as being a good student in high school. Right. Yeah, I look back in high school and I think I was a lot the same. I was more of a protector than I was, you know, a, like I was telling my daughter she's 16, you know, um about there's she's got this friend who if if i was back in high school his name is uh i'm not even gonna say his name crap uh but anyway i would have called him something than what I, he gets called today and i had a and it reminded me back in high school where i had a there was a guy who man he was so full of himself he was mr king of everything right and uh and his name was bill bader b-a-d-e-r okay <laughs> Now, he's probably off, you know, uh, CEO of a company doing great. I don't know. I haven't, you know, that was a chapter of my life that's closed now. And, you know, you're on to another one. But I used to call him master. Mm-hmm. I, as soon as you said his name, I, I knew. Yeah. Yes, master. Yes, master. He would get so pissed off. But that was, <laughs> I was that kind of guy. 
Yeah, more more the class clown. Well, yeah, and, and I don't like you know just like today, man. The 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 only the the thing that gets under my skin the most is people taking advantage of other people. I hate it. You know what I mean? That's why I don't get too wrapped up into politics. Every once in a while, I'll say something, but because that's all politics is to me, you know, is people positioning themselves, manipulating others, lying, whatever they can so that they can get elected. That's why I don't play. Oh, see, I'm going to go down that path and it's going to get nasty. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm with you. So yeah. What security. <laughs> we'll make the, I said security will make the awkward transition because I'm with you on like, yeah, we'll go off on a rant on, on that. I just hate people taking advantage of other people. I don't hate the people. I hate the action of taking yeah. advantage of somebody yeah. else. And so you yeah. can apply that in, I think, so many places in life, whether it's, you know, protecting somebody from a bully, you know, in high school or, you know, doing what you can to step up and step, you know, for somebody or, like today, we're going to talk about, you know, that small, small to medium sized businesses, mm -hmm. they get taken advantage of in numerous ways. I think one way they get taken advantage of is obviously the attackers, right? The people who come in, you know, plant ransomware or, you know, business email compromise mm -hmm. or whatever else, right? And take advantage right. of the small business. But then you've also got the people inside our own industry. I call them the wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. who are peddling goods and services to these small businesses that are not the right fit. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's a waste of money and they don't have money to waste. And that also pisses me off. I, I think that pisses me off more. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. We know attackers are not ethical. We know that, you know, to expect that from them. But when you're in the industry or selling into the industry and then taking advantage, that's, that's bad. Right. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it also not only does it uh, hurt them, but also it makes our jobs that much more difficult. Right. Because you give us a bad you give the rest of us a bad name. We're trying oh, to yeah. They, that, that small business has a, a bad experience where they get sold a bill of goods or, you know, pay a huge price tag and something happens because it wasn't the right solution. It wasn't configured properly. Now they're are they going to trust anyone else? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about that today. We'll talk about these 15. So there, I came across an article, I don't know, yesterday, day before. I can't remember what day it is anymore. But there was a day when I came across an article. It's 15 cybersecurity pitfalls and fixes for SMBs. I, I want to talk about that. And then I also want to talk about how we're going to transition, I think, the show and start inviting some really cool guests mm -hmm. uh, on a pretty regular basis. So we're going to start actually, it only took us 126 episodes before we're like, hey, let's let's formalize a schedule. That'd be cool. I mean, I kind of right? a lot about, I mean, it's how we, we roll. It's kind of like, yeah, we'll just, uh, yeah, we should probably do something. Right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not wing it quite so much. Well, totally, man. Because like, I didn't even, I got up what yesterday morning. I got up at uh, four or something in the morning. I'm like, oh, we got the podcast today. What are we talking about? Oh crap, we didn't do show notes. What I don't know. I so know. that's why. That's when I was like, oh here, let's do this. And so yeah, that's what leads us to this. Uh, <laughs> this, but you're right, man. This is life, right? Last minute. It's funny. I, I have a talk coming up. I did, and I don't. I don't even remember. Because I'm trying to do a little less talks. I don't, I don't mm. necessarily like them uh, because it takes so much time usually to prepare for them, and you know. And I, I like to create stuff like a new solution to something or. Yeah, it, there, it's it's. I don't, I don't mind doing the talk itself and getting right. up and doing it. It's all the prep work that you know people don't realize you know you're going up there for a an hour but it's you know four or six hours depending on what you're talking about if you're creating something new it could be even longer right figure it out know what you're going to talk about be familiar and comfortable with the information you know with the the content yeah it's a lot of work on the back end to, to it really is and i think a lot of speakers will just reuse 
mm-hmm. content. Right? And that, that's wise probably to just take the same talk and maybe, maybe I'm going to create three or four talks for the year. Mm-hmm. And I'll just give those talks. Well, I'm, I'm more ADD. So I'm like, I want to talk about this, but I've never talked about that before. So then I got to go create all this stuff. Well, anyway, there's this, I guess, pretty big, good size conference and InfraGuard thing coming up. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I should, uh, May, I think. I don't even, I should find out what it is. But they, uh, they emailed me, hey, you know, thanks for being a speaker. And I was like, I don't remember <laughs> ever, like, did I do this? Did marketing do this? I don't know who what this is. So thank God they have a page dedicated to the speakers so I could see what, you know, I'm like, what am I even talking about? So I look and I'm like, oh, okay, I can do something about that. So then, yeah, create, you know, but I, you have to create, and then they wanted my, like my slides, like, you know, it's a month before the talk and you want my slide deck already? Yeah. I don't make my slide deck until about 15 minutes before I'm ready to talk. And then even then I'm making changes. Well, and yeah. And we get a lot of really custom requests, especially from customers. Like in May, I'll be giving a talk to a health network, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, they want to know a review of just how all the different health, all the different affiliates scored on the S2 and, Mm-hmm. what are trends and what are you know what can they do as a as a whole to work together to get better you know where is there any trend that they can do something as a group right mm-hmm. that's a lot of work to pull all that info together and create you know a slide deck when you're looking at you know, probably 15 ish different entities that i have to pull, look at and figure out what i mean that's going to be a lot of work and i've also found it difficult to find good data in our industry you know we're, we're supposed to be such a data-driven industry but most of the data i see you know or, or find when i'm doing research for things is either old meaning past 12 months you know what i mean things move so fast that really in certain instances anything that's older than that is kind of i, I mean as the as it ages it becomes less relevant right mm-hmm. if there's if things are pretty stagnant, then your data sort of lives longer. But, you know, if things are moving quickly, moving quickly, moving quickly, your expiration date on, it's almost like an expiration date on milk versus an expiration date on cheese. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know I mean? Milk, that expiration date's like a couple of weeks, right? Usually something like that. Whereas cheese, it, I mean, I, I just scraped off some, well, I'm not gonna tell you about that. A year maybe, I mean, I don't know. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So, all right. So anyway, we've got that. Uh, oh, so I'm excited. I think one of the uh, and I'm. It's not. I got a whole roster of people that I think we're going to have that that our listeners will really enjoy hearing from. Because you know, after 126 episodes, it's not like you and I don't have cool stuff to say. But I'm like, oh, well, it's bringing somebody else's perspective might be yeah. really fun. Well, I mean, that's what we talk about. Like you want a diverse team. Well, same concept. Let's get, you know, as many people's opinion and talk through things. And, and I'm going to guarantee that at some point we're not going to agree with, you know, what they say, but it's a good, that's always a good discussion to have. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'd love, oh, yeah, it'll be fun when somebody comes on here and tries to sell something. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I know. You know what you need. You need dark trace and da 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 like okay this isn't gonna go well probably i didn't tell you this i got somebody maybe i did i've been getting bugged quite a bit about uh somebody about how how we could better monetize the podcast and we should go with share solution and it's like come on right although it's kind of cool that we've gotten to the point where people are you know reaching out to us for that yeah, well, you know, it's uh, man. I see, ADV is taking me all over the place this morning. The uh, there's a there's an organization. So Security Studio, NFR Secure, do both doing really really great. But Security Studio 
it's a software as a service company, right? So you always got to push faster. Mm -hmm. That company's not constrained by people, right? Like at FR Secure, the hottest commodity, the most important commodity we have are the people. Oh yeah, we we sell the analysts and consultants time. I mean, right. at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's that expertise. And it's hard to find good people. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I've told people, I don't know how many times, I don't care about your skills. You know? Yeah, we can teach skills. Yeah, you just, you know, be a good person, be genuine. Be somebody that I would like to hang out with. And if I were drinking beer, I would drink beer with you. Right. Be that kind of person. Um, yeah, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Uh, what the hell was that? Oh, sorry, that, that company's growing, Secure Studio. Uh, but we're going to take an investment, I think. Mm. We're going to take an investment uh, so that we can accelerate certain parts, right? At some point, you have to do it. Every, every software is a service company. If you want to grow, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Uh, but one of the one of the people uh, that I was introduced to that's also in this investment pool is Squadcast FM, uh, Zach Moreno. Hmm. Uh, so we might start using some of their stuff because I got to know him. He's a cool dude. I think you'd enjoy him. He, his background is, I didn't know his background. His motivation is a lot like ours. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I have no issue if, if we find a better solution on our own. It's just when, <laughs> yeah, the, the lead is, hey, I can, I, we can make you more money. That's, you, you right. missed the point. It totally missed it. Right. All right. So this article, this, uh, its title is 15 Cybersecurity Pitfalls and Fixes for SMBs. And SMB is small to mid-sized business. The article features a roundtable discussion between, team, I'm, I'm going to screw up names, I'm sure, uh, Timur Kovalev, that's the mm -hmm. CTO of Untangle, Eric Krohn uh, from No Before, who we were just talking about before the beginning of the show, Greg Murphy, the CEO of Order. Uh, this was on Threat Post, and they gave their take on what SMBs think about information security, the common mistakes that they make, and how they think they can do things better so um i like kind of dissecting these things because in our opinions are one the opinions are, are cool right as long as they're coming from the right place and we have no shortage of experts and i say quote you know air quotes experts mm -hmm. too so you have experts and then you have experts who aren't really experts and then whatever so i wanted to go through the list and see if we agree disagree or if we have something to add to the discussion. Yeah, you know, and, and this is kind of funny uh, coincidence. I had a, was supposed to be a 30 minute call that turned into about an hour and 20 with a 22, 23 person company mm -hmm. uh, last week that they were, they, they were very, very unhappy with their current InfoSec uh, provider. I won't okay. even call it a partner because they, of what kind of some of the things that I was told, but yeah, it was, uh, they basically were sold, sold it. Hey, you do this and you, you know, it's a, here's boxed HIPAA compliance, right? Go with us and you'll be HIPAA compliant right away. And she said, they've been with them for six, like within six months, she was like, what have I done? This is what I don't, I'm not getting any value. And so I, I'll be able to kind of talk as we yeah. go through this, like real world, like what reason, what are, what are they going through? You know, it's really common. Uh, when we were intentional when we started FR Secure that we were going to not abandon these underserved markets. We were not going to abandon the small to mid-sized businesses. Uh, because what happens often in our industry is companies come into this industry, they start a business and they start serving these small to mid-sized businesses. And then as quickly as you can, you move into the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to play in the damn enterprise and it's so damn competitive. Whereas, you know, the rest of the world, the 80% or whatever is left sort of floundering, right? You mm -hmm. look for, they try to create, you know, automated solutions, quick hit solutions, ones that they can monetize and um, scale right quickly. 
So, you know, this SMB thing is, is really important for us because we've been intentional about it. We've had the opportunity. We've had many people come into FR Secure leaders who want to push us into the enterprise. We got to go after the enterprise, go after the enterprise. I'm like, why? Well, I mean, you've got They're a pretty well served right now. Right. Well, and you've got a fortune 500. So you've got 500 companies. Well, how many small to mid-sized businesses are there? Right. I mean, multitudes more. Right. You know, well, yeah. And yeah, well, I'm with you. Why, why go try and fight with other people in this like highly competitive, they've got all the services and offerings they could need when we could help people and, and still, like you said, it's mission before money, right? If we help these people do it right, the money will come. Like, I'd yeah. rather work with 25 small to mid-size rather than one enterprise. Well, for sure. I mean, Equifax doesn't go out of business when they have a breach. Target doesn't go out of business right. when they have a breach. Facebook isn't going out of business because of their latest breach. But these small to mid-size businesses, the majority of them do go out of business because of a breach. You know, so yeah, these are a big deal for me. So the first one, the first one out of the 15 common SMB mistakes. So this came also from like a, I guess, a study that they did uh, where they said, you know, how confident are you in your ability to, you know, be resilient or how prepared are you for an attack? And this was a study of, I guess, a bunch of SMBs and 57% said they aren't confident, which I think is an interesting number right there because that seems high to me. I mean, low to me, I'm sorry. It seems like if I talk to SMBs, more than 15, 57% are not confident in their ability mm. you know, or confident in how prepared they are. 29% said medium confident and 14% said they are rock stars. I like to know the SMBs who think that they're rock stars. Well, those are the ones that are going to get hit the hardest because they they probably think, and maybe maybe they are, but it's not. I would be surprised based on like yeah. When you put, when you push yourself out there and say rock star, usually the next thing I'm going to get served is some humble pie. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh crap! I'm not as much of a I rock star. We're we're an SMB, and there's still stuff that we're constantly working on right like sure. regardless of you know how good you think you are there's always going to be something and as soon as you kind of get, get cocky about it and quit looking that's when it hits you so yep. i mean i think we've got a we've got a very solid security program but we're still improving we're still updating and upgrading and doing things to stay on top of it so yeah and I don't think I'd ever call myself a, a rock star. I mean, yeah, really good, fine. But rock star to me means like, you got it nailed, man. Go take, you know, well, I guess rock stars, you got it nailed, go take some drugs, but I'm not doing that. Right. It seems like all the rock stars go there. All right, so number one mistake, they think, uh, they think they're too small to be a target. I would agree with that as a pitfall. I mean, you, we hear that in IR, like, I can't believe that I got hit. We're, you know, right. 50 people and we do this very niche thing. Yeah, yeah, the attackers don't care. Right. Yeah, and I think, I, I do think, and that's always been the mentality, right? There's two things, I think, in that mentality. One is we're too small to be a target, mm -hmm. right? Who would want anything that we got? I mean, we're just a, you know an HR company or, you know, well, even the manufacturing is a big, like, you know, yeah, we make a widget or we do, I don't know, steel stamping, right? Like it's not anything. Why would anybody care? Right. Yeah. Take Fazio mechanical, right. The target breach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's an HVAC company. What, what are you going to get out of that? Well, maybe 50 million credit card numbers. Right. Or something. So, yeah, and I think the other piece is just people still think it's just generally not going to happen to them because it's never happened to them before. So they're like, huh? not going to not gonna happen to me. That happens to, you know, oh, Johnny down the street. 100% hear that. 
which, you know, and we stand here screaming and, hey, it is going to, but, you know, that's a whole other thing, you know, have we cried wolf too much to where they're like, I'm not even listening to you anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's so much FUD out there that people have had to, like, deal with for so many years. Yeah. So risk number two or mistake number two, no business risk evaluation. Why the hell would I do that? <laughs> I mean, you know. That takes us back to the definition of information security, right? It's risk management. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good to see that the industry now, I think, is, is starting to wake up more, more to that because you see it more. Like five, 10 years ago, this wouldn't have been on your list because people weren't talking risk like they are today. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And I think you're seeing you know, with well, CMNC and, and some of these other things that are requiring it. And, you know, it's like, oh, oh well, I guess it is kind of important. So, right. I, I, but yeah, I agree. Um, I would say we're definitely seeing more outside of what you would expect, you know, like healthcare and finance and banking. That's the majority of our customer base is in that arena in maybe some insurance things like that but they they have to because they're regulated and they're required well we're, we're now starting to see manufacturing cpas law firms you know more of these so what you wouldn't consider it traditionally or what you wouldn't see right so right. you're are you are starting to see a lot more um of these small companies realizing that, oh, yeah, we should probably be doing something. Well, it's got to start with risk management, too. I mean, that's the, Eric Krohn is the one who I think, I mean, he gives give some good stuff here. You have to do a risk assessment. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I agree, these, these heavily regulated industries, um, there's a big difference. And I know in my own life between being told what to do and doing the right thing. You know, self-motivation versus somebody forcing you to do mm -hmm. something. And I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's either you get this right yourself, do the things you're supposed to be doing as a responsible business leader, as a responsible owner, or you'll be forced to. Mm -hmm. Which do you prefer? Right. Yeah. And, you know, he Eric has a really good example in there where he says he's talking to his chiropractor and chiropractor is like if there's nation states out there doing things like solar winds and they can get the big guys i don't stand a chance so why bother trying and it's the wrong mentality right because it's not the nation states that you have to worry about right. you know it, it, here's the thing the people that are doing something are going to be in better shape than that because if, even if you just, you know, something simple, turn off ICMP responses to, from externally facing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if he hasn't done that, he, they're going to light up before you do, right? It's, it's just, you know, they're going to, they, the attackers are going path of least resistance. And for when, SMBs for sure. When you, yeah, exactly. When, and when you go, eh, I don't know what are you going to do? You right. are the path of least resistance. <laughs> Right. Well, and, the, and, and you see that mentality changes when you get into large business, because I, I remember working for a, a big, big bank and uh, I was talking to the CISO and, and he got up and gave a talk to the entire security team and it was a good sized team. And he said, um, we don't have to be secure. We just have to be more secure than the other guy. Yeah. Now that that mentality for me works fine in small to mid sized businesses, but in enterprise, that is not the truth. Yeah. Oh, no. An enterprise, an enterprise, you're targeted specifically for reasons, right? They're not looking for lowest hanging fruit at JP Morgan versus, uh, you know, Wells Fargo versus US Bank. They are specifically targeted in small to mid sized businesses. Yeah, you're the, low, you're the lowest hanging fruit. You're the one that looks the most interesting. That's where I'm going to go. And, and, and oftentimes, those small to mid sized businesses, they're either attacked directly, like this is a quick hit ransomware. Yeah. to get you know some money there or 
in the in the worst case scenarios, it's I'm going to pivot here. I'm going to use this like IE target, IE many 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 third party you know risk management type breaches. I'm going to use this SMB and pivot into the bigger companies. Yeah, or you know we we had an IR where they had a wire it was wire fraud, and they they found out because their uh, vendor was like, uh, are you going to pay us? What's going on? And I mean, it was, oh gosh, I don't remember the exact amount. I want to say it was like 10 grand or something like not insignificant. And then as we started working through it and they started looking, it had been going on for like several months, like three or four months, at least something like that. I don't remember the details, but right. Like that's a tangible I, I can you right. imagine losing 10 grand a month as a, a small company? That's that's not an insignificant amount to, to try. And, to... and you keep on another false mentality, illogical. It's not reasonable. It's not using reason to think that. I mean, we say it's gone on for a couple of months. Why didn't you attend to this at the very beginning? It's not going to go away. It right. doesn't just disappear. It's not like, oh, look. We're good now. You've got to make fundamental changes or it's, you know, like you said, how did nobody notice that uh, the the uh, transfer, the bank account information changed? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, you have a wound on your forehead and it's getting bigger. But right. don't worry about it. It'll go away. Okay. Right. All right. So mistake number two, no business risk evaluation. Every small business everywhere, I don't care, profit, nonprofit, government, you know, public, private, you must do risk assessments. Do risk assessments that are simple, easy to understand, effective, measurable, uh, and then make risk decisions, right? Because just doing the assessment, that's where people stumble too. They just do the assessment and they're like, oh, we're good now. No, you're not. This is, this is a new habit that you need to learn. And just like any other new habit, right? It, it's uncomfortable at first. You have to fight through that. Do your assessment, make risk decisions, build roadmaps, execute on roadmaps, come back, do the whole thing all over again. It yep. becomes part of your normal business operations, right? Oh, yeah. And we talk to people all the time and like do this and document. If you are accepting the risk, that's fine. It, that's completely a legitimate decision right but you need to document that you've at least looked at it and why you're accepting it right and i've heard that so many times too the illogical argument from ceos or CISOs, where well if you tell me about if you tell me about a risk well then i have to do something about it yeah. so that's their justification for not doing a risk assessment i'm like you understand that risk ignorance isn't going to defend you no Oh, especially <laughs> now. Right. So you really don't have a choice. And to your point, just because there's a risk doesn't mean I have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I can accept it. I can acknowledge it, say it is what it is. We're going to live with it, move forward. Maybe look for some mitigating controls, like maybe increased monitoring of some sort, you know, add that specifically to your response plan. So mm -hmm. if this one risk does get compromised, this is what we're going to do about it. But yeah, you don't have to fix everything, man. You'll never will. Forget about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, we absolutely have accepted some risk. I'm not going to go into detail because why? <laughs> but there's certain things in the S2 that we're like, yeah, we're just not going to do that. It's not the totally legit. Not worth, but, but a good example is we don't have a, a generator backup or a backup generator. Mm -hmm. But we don't have but everything we use is cloud-based. There's no business, re like how would I justify, you know, saying we need to spend you know, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on a generator and a fuel contract when there's no business benefit. We're gonna accept the risk of, yeah, we lose power at the office. Okay, we've all been working remotely for the last year and had no issues. Cool, we'll just do that. <laughs> Exactly, man. hundred percent. So uh, mistake number three. So number one, again, I'm just going to keep recapping these because if you're a small business and you're listening, you need to start paying attention. Not that you're not, I don't know you, but 
you know, one, thinking you're too small to be a target. That's a mistake. Number two, not doing, not treating this as risk management. So not doing risk assessments and making risk decisions. That's mistake number two. Mistake number three, you haven't made an asset inventory. You don't even oh know God. what it is you're trying to protect. And we, I, hundred and whatever percent. Like, right. yeah. And, and that's not even SMBs. That's absolutely not limited to SMBs. No. That is all over the place. We see that all the time for companies that you would be like, well, really? Are you right? Okay, I'm uh, knowing I'm going to create a virtual card to work with you now. <laughs> right. Well, and this one actually ticks me off too, because this is one where I get pushed back, believe it or not, from other security people or IT people. They're like, well, do you have any idea how hard that is? I'm like, how much do you get paid? Are you getting paid? Right. Well, and, you know, this is part of the job, right? You have to understand what it is you're trying to protect. You, there are tools you can get. There are scanners you can use. There's all kinds of things you can do to get creative. You don't have to be like, well, Excel spreadsheet, that, that's too much work. No. Oh, you know, and obviously we're, we're product vendor agnostic, you know, but personally I've used Spiceworks in the past. It does an automatic scan. You can set it up to alert if it finds new things. Solar winds. And, and it's, well, but, <laughs> but Spiceworks is totally free too though. Right. So, I mean, there are quality. We get started with Nmap. Nmap is yeah, free. Or too. even that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the that the other one because it you know it does do software inventory as well as hardware and it'll it, you can set it up to alert you on changes so if it finds new software even right I, well that and i like using dual purpose tools too right if i can use one tool for multiple purposes so you know spiceworks is a very broad tool yep. set right there's it's a lot of things inventory that, ticketing all kinds can, of configure it correctly Right, it yep. probably doesn't need to speak to the internet except for a certain occasion. So you can close that off if you're if in case you're worried about a solar winds type attack. No, absolutely, yeah, yeah. They have a cloud solution or an on-prem, and you know you determine your risk tolerance. When I we used it, it was on-prem, and you know that was it. Didn't none of the servers that didn't need to talk to the internet talk to the internet. Right. Well, and another thing I like is, uh, well, that I've used very much so and, and advise clients a lot on this is getting started. Use your vulnerability scanning data. Yeah. If you're doing oh. vulnerability scans on a regular basis, there's a ton of good information in there. Yes, it doesn't rank critical, high, medium, and probably not even low. A lot of it's the info stuff there. Are, uh, and it's all in XML format. So you, you can get XML parsers. You can parse mm -hmm. it yourself. You can code something. I mean, it's it's a lot easier than you think. Start there. And then like, okay, I'd like to know a little bit more about these data types and things like that. Well, then look for other tools, but you probably have tools right now in your own toolbox to get yeah. you started on that. Although the, the issue there is you're assuming that you're actually doing vulnerability scanning. <laughs> right. I don't know how you, yeah. I don't, and I don't know how you manage risk without understanding vulnerabilities and threats. So that's another, I mean, it's, yeah. it's logic. All right, number four. So number three, again, asset inventory, hardware, software, data. Data is probably your most valuable asset, but it's also the hardest one to get your hands around. So start the other way, hardware, software, then go after your data. That's my advice anyway, but what do I know? I just do security shit, stuff, sorry. Number four, insecure digital assets. So this one, you know, I, this one kind of like, what are you talking about insecure digital assets? But it's basically the same thing we're talking about. It's uh, you know, your digital stuff, the stuff you can't touch, right? right. Yeah, so, web servers, cloud yeah. servers, you know, things like that, yeah. And configure that stuff, right? When you implement a new server, it's not, we just go with the defaults and stand it up. Hey, it works, everything's cool. No, 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 you got to lock that thing down. So building security in early on in the process and any process is really, really important. If we're going to build this server, are we going to use, you know, maybe some CIS, you know, config templates or you know, DIS yeah. dig, right? Uh, there's a ton of really good free 
like it walks you through it step by step. What do you need to be doing? What should you be doing? You know, it's not it's not rocket science. You, no, but I think I do think people struggle, you know, because you're busy running your SMB. You know, there's a lot of like, like okay, great. I need to secure my my S3 buckets. Well, here's another thing. I just having to search for that stuff is hard sometimes. Well, but how many SMBs uh, rely on a, a, an MSP, right? Like they they don't they outsource their IT and security. Sure. I, ask, like, what are you doing on these fifteen things? Tell me what you're doing. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. It would be to take these fifteen things, put put it into a template contracty kind of thing. And say here, give this. If you're outsourcing your IT or security management, make them give you some th- kind of assurance that you're that they're doing. That they're things. doing it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay, I'm gonna. We'll take that as a takeaway. I'll add it to my list and get done with it in a year and a half. Yeah, right. Well, and, you know, a good okay. example is I'm working with a company on a SOC two readiness, and they outsource to the MSP, and a lot of it is. Um, asking about, you know, well, you know, logging and things like that for the SOC 2. And the MSP was asking some really good questions about like, hey, we don't, we're not familiar with this. What does this mean? Like, you know, they're asking for saying that they need to have firewall logs and all these different, what, what is the proper time frame? Like, can you help, help me understand what, what do we need to be doing to make sure that they're compliant? And yep. to me, that's a great MSP because they're working to make sure that they're doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. So number five is no network segmentation. I'd take it a step further. I'd say network isolation. You know, difference is segmentation is typically a layer three thing, right? Where we set up VLANs, whereas Mm -hmm. isolation is I'm actually gonna use some packet filtering between the VLANs. Uh, That's a much better approach. Not all your systems, all your servers need to talk to all your systems and all your servers on all ports and all services, right? Oh, Start to understand that and lock that down more. I talked to a, a company uh, that was, again, looking to do the right thing. They wanted to do, uh, the, the person that had set up their AWS infrastructure had left and they don't, they were like, well, what do we, we don't know what we don't know. And so we were talking through their, how it's set up and it, you know, it turns out that their web server is, on, it's a flat uh, in the, their, it's, so their web server is on the same segment as their database that has the, you know, sensitive information. I'm like, eh, yeah, you know, great. You've locked it down so that only certain, you know, protocols can get to the, to that front end server that accesses the database, but you are wide open because, your web server is open, <laughs> right? You know, so it, it happens all the time. And, you know, right. I told him on the thing, on the call, the scoping call, I was like, eh, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be a recommendation is that you segment and isolate that web server from anything that is internal. And the cool thing too is, you know, when I first started in this industry, uh, you know, things were simpler. And so, that's why that always resonates with me that complexity is the greatest enemy of security because man i've seen that happen over my career i've seen that happen in organizations where you just get so many different tools so many different servers so many different things overlap I mean, it's just crazy right and that that's much harder to secure but another thing that i learned early on in my career was the better i understand something the better i can secure it mm-hmm. So if I intimately know my environment, I'm better. I'm a better security person. I can secure that a lot better than one where there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm just really not sure what that does. Now, I understand that a lot of us are working in environments where that's just not possible for one person to really understand intimately what goes on. But if you have a little chunk of your universe, a server that you're responsible for, a database that you're responsible for, if you're responsible for the network, if you're responsible for this set of firewalls, freaking master that Mm -hmm. know it so well so intimately that you're almost dreaming that stuff because i could tell back in the day you know being i I grew up in a network 
guy. I was a network guy. Network. I took so much pride in my work. I could tell you how the network was performing. I could tell you if something was off mm -hmm. based on the lights on a switch. I wouldn't even need to log in because I knew it so well. It's almost like you could feel it. You can sense it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I you know, I, I was the Windows VM type of, you know, background and the same thing. Like, if you're doing it right, you, you want to be proactive. You want to find those issues before they get reported by the user. It and was like, embarrassing if the user had to report it. Oh, yeah, you never want that. But anyway. But nowadays, you know, we just don't, I don't know, maybe this, some of us just don't take as much pride as we used to, especially in SMBs, I guess, because it is usually outsourced. So it's a third party coming to do a lot of the stuff for you. Well, and, they've got a lot of clients, man. I mean, maybe they're, maybe it's hard for them to understand it like we did. Yeah. All right. Number six, not understanding basic security hygiene. I don't Isn't like that, that word hygiene because I always spell it wrong. I was gonna say, isn't that what we've been talking about this whole thing? Like, yeah. these are, our, I don't think this is a separate topic. This is what these 15 things are. Right, and and, it, and to, when we get through the list too, I, what, what I think we should do is take their information, create our own list of 15, because I agree. Hygiene, when you talk about basic security hygiene, this is all basic stuff. And we're not talking about like, any AI weird strategy right. type things. This is like, these are fundamentals. Well, and everything that they talk about in that section is covered in one of the other things on the list. So I, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like we just added this one for the sense of adding this one. But they do have, you know, in here, which we'll talk about you know, a little later too, is, you know, backups, access control. Those are also hygiene things, patching, you know, but yeah, I don't like, I don't like the fact that they, this is a, mis yeah, it's too much overlap here. I think, you know, we need to make it cut and dry for SMBs. Number seven, no business risk evaluation. Well, didn't we just talk about that for number two? I was going to say that's a duplicate. Yeah. So, okay. We just made 15. All right. We could have made this into 14. Maybe we just add complexity for the sake of complexity. Yeah. Let's, let's, we could probably get this to 10 and be cover everything. Exactly. And make it actionable. Right. I want to, right. I want, I don't want an SMB because they, we've preached the hell out of them, man. We've told them so many things and they're all like, whatever, because when I'm, when I'm told something and just think about it, like your own self, when I'm told something that I don't understand, I have choices. I can either go learn what it is you just told me so I can understand it or I ignore it. Mm -hmm. I do that with my own. I mean, Hopefully my wife doesn't listen to this, but I do that with her. <laughs> you know, she'll say something and I'll be like, I'm just going to let it go. Yeah. Ignorance. But I think the same thing happens with SMBs. We, we need to make it super simple and actionable. Yeah. And mistake number eight, know what normal looks like. Absolutely. This requires you to be really intimate. Yeah. You well, it's, it's good. I agree that if you don't know, if you don't have that baseline, and we've reached that, you don't know what your baseline is. How do you know if there's a problem? Got to establish a baseline. And then right. that's, I mean, that's going to be one of your earliest warning signs. All right. It, you know, I know, that, like you were saying, I know the performance. I know that this does this at these times. If I suddenly have a spike outside of the normal time, well, maybe I want to look at that and understand what's going on. Right. I mean, and it could be the thing. Oh, go ahead. It could be network traffic. It could be CPU usage. It could be memory usage. It could be, you know, disk activity. You know, it, it, regardless of what you're looking at, set a baseline and monitor against that baseline. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And the thing to remember about computers and and networks and anything digital, they only do what you tell them to do. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason behind every single thing that happens, every single packet that's sent on your network, every single CPU cycle, every single execution, something made it happen. There's a cause and effect that happens. And so when you see a deviation from the baseline, don't just blow it off. Yeah. Why? Right. There's a reason. It actually, it becomes kind of fun if you like, you know, 
detective work and forensic kind of things. It can be really fun actually hunting that stuff down. You learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm looking at where we're at in the time. This might become a two part. Oh, we'll, we'll go quick. Number nine, two factor authentication. Absolutely. Do two factor authentication. If you don't yep. on anything externally exposed, you're naughty. Yep. Eight, misunderstanding cloud security. That's a can of worms. Well, and it doesn't, isn't that the same as insecure digital assets? Yeah, true. We're going to have to, we're going to have to clean this thing up, aren't we? Yeah. And CAIQ, yeah, CSA, Cloud Security Alliance has got some good, you know, mm -hmm. documentation on that stuff too. Lack of security training. Absolutely. And it's yeah. not just training. It, yeah, exactly. It's that, Tra that follow up too. Yeah, I mean, we lump training and awareness like they're the same thing. They're different. Training is when you're teaching somebody a specific skill, mm -hmm. right? Something that they can do that they didn't know how to do before. Awareness is like, hey, you didn't forget, did you? Like this stuff is still happening. You know, one of the things that is, well, and maybe not in the last year, but one of the little tips that I've given and that is super effective, put your awareness posters on the bathroom stall doors. I yep. well, like what? I'm like, you've got, I mean, it seems kind of silly, but you've got a captive audience. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they that's don't... that's why they put all those ads now on the stalls at the bars, right? You go into the right. bar and you're you're standing there, you know, urinating, you're like, oh, look at that. I could get a new Lexus for huh. Right. Yeah. I've been it, it, people don't <laughs> they don't think of those things and it it, it works. And keep in mind a good the way you know your training awareness is effective, you're getting more uh, questions or uh, reports from your employees. You yeah. want and that. The, that and the response goes up. Yep. Yeah, for sure, man. And quirky always stands out, right? Do something funky, weird, out of the ordinary. That's the stuff that sticks in people's brains, not the dry, same old, same old crap. Right. Yep. Mistake number 12, no business continuity plan. Yeah. Oh, supply chain. Oh, shoot. yeah, there's a supply chain one in there. Yeah. So Agreed. number 11, don't understand the supply chain threat. Your supply chain threat, meaning the threat you pose to the supply chain, I think probably more in an SMB than the threats posed by your supply chain, because um, you probably don't have as many suppliers as the people that you affect upstream. So yeah. Anyway. Yep. Yep. Mistake 12, no business continuity plan. Why? Well, they haven't done a risk assessment, so you can't really have a continuity plan if you don't know <laughs> you don't know your assets and you don't know what the risks are. Right. Why would they do a business <laughs> continuity plan plan? I think I'm good enough to continue it as it is now anyway. There you go. Or something. Mistake 13, lack of strategic asset allocation and budgeting. Good luck budgeting if you haven't done a risk assessment. Good luck budgeting if you haven't done risk management because your, your budgeting is absolutely 100% should be based on our risks. And these are the risks that are unacceptable. And therefore, it's going to cost this much to do these things. If it's based on something else, I don't know what you're budgeting on. Yep, 100%. Six, 14, and 15. Wow, we lumped up two more together. Failing to back up and lax patching, i.e. hygiene, which we already talked about too. Right. And I don't, yeah, I think that they're uh, kind of covering that all together, but those are very different things. True. Very true. So, and they also have another, uh, I just think it's kind of a weird written article because there's also a graphic in there that I think breaks it down a little, breaks it up a little differently, but we're going to do a follow-up to this. I think we'll create mm -hmm. our list of R15 and make it, you know, try to make it actionable for people. Yep. All right, we're up against time. News uh, as of 9.15 a.m. on the 5th, which I think was Monday, we have 5,618 students registered in the CISSP mentor program. Blows my mind. <laughs> it's going to be fun. That's a lot. And we, <laughs> and we just divvied up the, uh, the, the, the teaching load yesterday. Um, did you get, you didn't get models, did you? Uh, I, you know what, I honestly, I saw it and I haven't looked okay. to see what I actually, what that actually means. I think, 
because the schedule is now set on which instructor yep. is teaching which. Is that, in, is, that under, is that security engineering or security operations? I can't remember. I don't, I don't even want to. I'm not even, I'm not even going to speculate, man. I don't remember which one. Because if it ends up being you again, I'm, my heart. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Well, you you mentioned it. We you you're like, I'm doing it totally random, and I was like, I'm totally good with it being random. But if I get models again, I'm it's there was it was rigged. <laughs> I, can show you, yeah. I actually did it. I no, I believe you. Where it's I've, fully automated, so it's like if these guys come back and say, no, you rigged that game. I'm like, <laughs> because I also saw that I got network and communications, and I'm like, that's the bomb. I don't. That's the easy one for you. See, that's your that, real house. It totally is. So I'm like, I like how that worked out. But yeah, it was totally random. All right. Interesting news articles this week that we're not going to get a chance to talk about. But in case you've you know, been sleeping under a rock or living under a rock, uh, there was a big breach, like actually a couple of breaches. Uh, they kind of hid the, you know, how this all happened. But 500 plus million Facebook accounts Eh, you know, I don't know how big of a deal it really is when you're a social media user anyway, and you're already kind of giving out your date of birth and your name and your email address and everything else on those Cell phones. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, the one I found yesterday afternoon that I somehow missed on Friday was there. There's a big Fortinet. Uh, that is a big Fortinet. Yeah. Yeah, that is actively being exploited. So if you have Fortinet, uh, get <laughs> get on it. Start patching yeah. immediately. Absolutely. And then the other one I had was, uh, you know, ransomware gangs emailing victim customers for leverage, which is, you know, this is what scammers do, right? If you close, they're going to go to the, it's like pouring water, right? If you block one, one escape for the water, it just either goes around or finds another, you know, path to go down. This is just another path. So if you do have your backups and you've done the good cyber hygiene things that you should have been doing to protect yourself, you're still not out of the woods, right? Because these gangs now know that you've been doing that. So now they're emailing your customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should have expected that. I mean, the, the thing is with these scammers too, I should, we should just do some predictions because they're so predictable in the way they operate, right? They're not, we give them so much credit, like, man, these guys must be super duper smart, right? But no, they're not. Oh, no. I mean, there's a crux. It, well, and, and there's a reason, I mean, IR isn't easy, but there's a reason we know, like, we, we know what to look for every time. Like, it's the same stuff or very similar, right? You, you know the things to look for. There's a reason for that. They're yeah. doing the same thing all the time. Yep. Yeah. All right. So wrapping up. Good talk, Brad. Seriously. I dig, dig, I always dig talking to you, man. Uh, you got me kind of fired up a little bit this morning, so that's good. It's a good way to start the day. I mean, we're both tired, so I figure you got to get that adrenaline going. Yeah, and I got a new energy drink I've never heard of before called G Fuel. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sounds pretty good. It's doing all right. Shout outs this week, real quick. Um, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to my daughters. Uh, just with the past year, they finally are hopefully going to be going back. Uh, they're they're quarantining this week because they did go to a water park for spring break with my wife, who is who is fully vaccinated. But you know, the past year has been really hard. Where you know they've been basically isolated from their friends, and just super proud of uh, how they've handled it, and that they're you know both getting on honor roll and and getting accolades from teachers. So just shout out to them for putting up with me for a year. That's awesome, man. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, somebody that a lot of people already know, but it's uh, Chris Roberts. You know, I think a lot of, you know, he's, he's kind of a public figure, but people don't realize a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, right? Human beings have things that, you know, get hit by all kinds of different directions. So I just want to give a shout out to him because uh, I know him personally and um, I know how hard it is or how hard it gets sometimes to kind of face the storm that he does. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate people that do that, that, that just, you know, persevere, man. Oh, you, you, you're, yeah, you they are. exactly. So appreciate that. All right. Thank you to all our listeners. Uh, send us things by email. I think I saw a couple emails that I got to go respond to at Proton Mail. So 
it's at unsecurity at protonmail.com. If you're a social type, we I tweet more than Brad does because Brad's just not very social. Uh, he's a he's an in-person social kind of guy. Uh, yeah, right? I I just don't have time. I'll be honest. I know, man. I go the same <laughs> way. I do like like as a hobby, like almost at night or something. So anyway, on Twitter, I'm at Evan Francine. Brad is at Brad Knight. Not very creative. Just take our names and munch them together, and that's where you find us. Yeah. Two other Twitter if, handles. If you reach out to me directly or, or copy me, I will respond. I just don't. I do. I'm yeah, not if you proactive on sending stuff out most of the time. Yeah, when I tag you, you respond. Uh, other Twitter, hand, Twitter handles where you can find stuff. Unsecurity, this podcast, and that's not very active, but I, I assume it'll get more active, is at Unsecurity P Security Studio, at Studio Security, and FR Secure at FR Secure. If you haven't had a chance and you're interested in signing up for the CISSP Mentor Program, go do that. It starts on the 12th. That's Monday. That's it. We'll talk to you again next week.